six women and five men. They are put on a raft, as much as they can fit, and left in the middle of the ocean. So what's the purpose? One of these eleven people on this raft is a scientist. He is conducting a social experiment on himself with this raft journey. His aim is to solve the cause of aggression in humans. And he has an incredible claim. According to him, the answer to this is sexuality. And he thought he could prove this with this social experiment he conducted. So, what's happening on this raft? Do the scientist thoughts come true? In this video, I will tell you the story of the Eccles social experiment along with real footage taken from the raft. Enjoy watching. Anthropologist Santiago Genoves had developed his career by conducting research on the subject of violence. His life was even intertwined with violence. While he was still a child, he suddenly found himself in the Spanish Civil War and had to flee because of it. When he was 15 years old, in 1972, the plane he boarded for a seminar was hijacked by armed pirates. The attackers were neutralized, but Santiago observed how differently passengers behaved when they were under threat and risk. In his research, he encountered experiments that observed how much more violence male monkeys resorted to in order to reach female monkeys. All of this I've told you put the idea of conducting a social experiment on humans into Santiago's mind. He had a hypothesis that humans show their true faces when under threat. Moreover, thanks to their sexual urges, they would compete with each other and even resort to violence if necessary. Santiago designed a small raft where both sexuality and danger were present. He would place 10 people in this raft and accompany them as an observer. During this intercontinental journey that would last about three months, he would observe the others and take notes. He put ads in newspapers to recruit participants. Hundreds of people applied to this ad. Since one point of Santiago's experiment was about sexuality, he paid attention to the balance of women and men and chose six women and four men. He made sure that the people he chose were young and physically attractive. He chose people from different ethnic cultures and different races. He carefully thought about the name of the raft and named it Akali, meaning house in water in Aztec. This raft, which was 12 meters long and 7 meters wide, could barely fit 11 people. Santiago had chosen chosen the storm season so that the experiment would be more stressful and dangerous. Moreover, this raft didn't even have an engine. Starting from the Canary Islands just off the coasts of Spain and Africa, this journey's final destination was Mexico. This photo was taken before the raft set sail to the ocean. In order, the leftmost is Bernardo, a 29-year-old priest. He is from Angola. Santiago deliberately put a priest on his raft because he thought that having a priest in a place where people think about sexuality would heat things up. Next to him is Jose, a 34-year-old Uruguayan anthropologist, who is Santiago's student. Next to Jose is Isuke, a 29-year-old Japanese, who is also the group's cameraman. Next to Isuke is Mary, a 36-year-old American. Her job is to operate the raft's radio. Next to Mary is Edna, a 32-year-old Czechoslovakian doctor. Next to Edna is Maria, the captain of our raft, a 30-year-old Swedish woman. In fact, she holds the title of Sweden's first female ship captain. Next to her is Faye, a 23-year-old American radio operator. Next to Faye is Servan, a 30-year-old French diver. Next to Servan is Santiago, the 49-year-old who is behind all these events. Next to him is Rashida, a 23-year-old Algerian researcher. Finally, there is Charles, a 37-year-old Cypriot. He is also a radio operator, like Mary and Faye. So our team is like this. When asked why these 10 people participated in this social experiment, they answered, just for the experience. But Mary used this social experiment to escape from her husband. Before participating in the experiment, she had fought with her husband and because she was afraid he would harm her, she thought of escaping from him with this social experiment. To summarize in general terms, we had people of all ethnic backgrounds, from religious to irreligious, from African to American, from black to white. The year this social experiment was conducted was 1973. The name of this raft in the press was known as the sex boat. Did you notice something? On this raft, not only was there a distribution of women and men, but women also had more important roles. Santiago deliberately gave more important jobs to women, but generally gave men menial tasks. Santiago wanted men to belittle their work. This was because he wanted to create tension between women and men. The raft was so small 
that there was no private space. Everyone was sleeping intertwined. He even deliberately arranged the sleeping arrangement in a male-female pattern. At night while everyone was sleeping, two people would keep watch. Of course, Santiago had planned this too and planned for the watches to be kept by a woman and a man. Santiago had forbidden participants from bringing materials like books to occupy themselves, that is, to eliminate individual activities. The aim was to want them to be in constant interaction with each other. According to some sources on May 11, according to others on May 12, 1973, Akali started its journey that would last a hundred a month days with 11 crew members. The first days on the raft had started very well. People were getting to know each other and bonding. Santiago, on the other hand, did not interfere with these activities. On the contrary, he sat in a corner and took notes on what his subjects were doing. The journey had started quite normally. There seemed to be no problem. At one point, a school of sharks started following the raft. This event created a small-scale tension. It was a very regressive process, especially for women, because women's blood was dripping into the ocean when they relieved themselves during their menstruation periods. How so? You might ask. The toilet of the raft was a hole in a protrusion at the end of the raft. At first, when people needed to go to the toilet, they would say, I'm going to the toilet. No one come there. After getting used to it, they even started posing for cameras while in the toilet. While all this was happening, exactly 20 days had passed. Even if there was no tension, the boredom in people was starting to show. This was exactly what Santiago wanted. Because boredom could make people do very ridiculous things. For example, Charles and Rashida had started flirting. Edna, the raft's doctor, had sexual intercourse with Charles and Aisuke separately. These events did not create tension as Santiago thought. There was no power struggle or jealousy among men. In fact, Edna and Aisuke said that these were not the result of intense desires but completely out of boredom. Other passengers on the raft did not perceive these events as competition. They didn't even care. Santiago saw them as monkeys, but no one behaved like monkeys. The subjects were fed up with eating canned fish every day and made a decision. They decided to catch and eat a shark from the ocean, and they caught the shark, but there was a problem. They needed to kill this shark and then cut it up. Jose undertook this task. He took an axe in his hand and hit it many times. Everyone was watching Jose carefully. Especially Santiago was watching much more carefully. Santiago thought that the purpose of his experiment had finally begun. He even took notes in the vein of the wild streak of those on the raft finally came into action. Their dark sides emerged. Soon this desire for violence could turn towards each other. He was even affected by this event and hid the axe so they wouldn't harm each other. Santiago had greatly exaggerated this event. People just wanted to eat fresh fish, and the only tool they could do this with was the axe. Santiago was so impatiently waiting for what he wanted, that is, the desire for violence to emerge, that he had turned this event into a ridiculous point in his own way. Santiago had recorded everything from women's menstrual cycles to everything. His aim was to try to catch a correlation regarding aggression, but all these records had been wasted because there was no violence incident whatsoever. Even though they had reached 51 days, no chaos had occurred. Santiago's morale and psychology were slowly starting to deteriorate because he couldn't get a tangible result for his experiment. Santiago decided to heat things up a bit more. He was asking people questions like, do you play with yourself at night? Who would you like to sleep with on this raft? When these didn't work either, Santiago started gossiping. He was trying to disrupt people's relationships. Once, in one-on-one -on -one meetings, Santiago had said in front of everyone what Edna and Jose had said about each other. His aim was to create unrest, but what he expected didn't happen. Edna and Jose laughed off this incident, but something stuck in people's minds too. Why had Santiago started doing such a thing? And people were now sure that this man was someone with bad intentions. When Santiago saw that this gossiping incident didn't work, he started playing with people's nerves. He 
was deliberately provoking them. For example, because Fei was black, he was belittling her by saying, you are a primitive person. Santiago wasn't even racist in normal life, but he was doing all the filth he could to be right in this social experiment. The people on the raft started to be so disgusted with Santiago that they thought of killing him. At one point, the raft's rudder was broken, and a part under the raft needed to be changed. Normally, Servanay would do such work. Just as she had put on all her equipment and was about to dive into the water, Santiago said, let me handle it. Servanay reluctantly handed over the task to Santiago. Despite Santiago's efforts for hours, he couldn't manage it. Servain waited for Santiago to sleep and went down into the water in the darkness of the night and fixed the malfunction in five minutes. When Santiago woke up in the morning and was getting ready to enter the water, when Servain said, I already solved the problem, Santiago got angry. Santiago had played with people's lives because of his ego, but he accused the person who solved the problem of starting a rebellion on the raft. Remember we said at the beginning, that Santiago deliberately chose the storm season. Once, Akali was caught between intense waves and winds. The raft's captain tried to go to a nearby port to protect people. But Santiago said no, we're doing an experiment here and didn't allow it and finally declared himself captain. The patience of those on the raft was starting to run out and that last straw came. Akali was about to collide with a large cargo ship that didn't notice it. Santiago who had made himself the so-called captain, was making meaningless movements with his hands and feet all mixed up. At that moment, Maria, who was the real captain of the raft, took control of the situation and organized everyone to ensure that no one was hurt from this incident. After this incident, no one took Santiago seriously anymore. Santiago had neither self-confidence nor reputation left. While the whole team was dealing with Santiago below, they gathered in the upper gathering area and started talking about whether we should get rid of this man. He hadn't brought the raft to a shore in stormy weather. He was almost saved at the last minute when he was about to collide with a ship. He gossiped. He provoked people. People rightfully wanted to get rid of Santiago. Santiago had told people, I won't interfere with you. You will handle your own affairs and I will just observe you. He had tried to create chaos by giving women more important jobs and touching men's pride. But he was the only man who tried to handle these things without letting his male pride get hurt by what Servan or Maria did. They had two three more meetings and decided to manage him instead of getting rid of him. Because Santiago had collapsed, his pride, ego and self-confidence were broken. One day, while Santiago was listening to the news on the radio, he received the news that he had been fired from the university where he worked. The reason was that the university thought this social experiment tarnished the university's name, so they terminated Santiago's job. On top of that, Santiago's academic friends expressed that they would never work with him again. When he heard these, Santiago fell into a severe depression. This depression caused Santiago to become ill. Some from the group thought Santiago was faking it and trying to attract attention. Despite everything, the people on the raft tried to do everything they could for Santiago. Santiago's recovery. Santiago wrote in his diary, There was only one person who showed aggression, and that was me. I was a man trying to control everyone, including himself. Akali finally came to Mexico. This 101 day adventure had finally ended. Participants saw this event as a sweet, fun experience they would remember in the future. Some even stayed in touch and became close friends. For Santiago, however, all these events were a complete disappointment. If Santiago had looked at the story of six young people from the country of Tonga in 1965 whose boat broke down and were stranded on an island, who became closer instead of becoming enemies and were rescued 15 months later through solidarity, which will be our subject in the future. Maybe now he would see that people unite rather than become enemies in difficult situations and would not have dealt with such a ridiculous experiment. But Santiago thought that he would achieve fame and glory by saying, look, Humanity is like this filth, and I revealed it. But after the experiment he had nothing left. Even his existing reputation was destroyed. This is the story of Santiago's Akali Raft experiment, who wanted to prove his own truths and gain more fame and glory, but lost all the reputation he had. That's all from me for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves until the next video. Goodbye.